YouTube, Nickel and Diamond here again. So one of the issues that there have been uh, with the EcoBoost vehicles, uh, especially the trucks, have been prone to this particular issue, is they have a tendency to have a pretty rough idle. Um, and mine's happening pretty much all the time. Um, I'm bracing the, the camera right now against the steering wheel. You can see there's a lot of vibration transferring. So you can see how much the idle hunts around. Normally the idle in a vehicle hunts around, but this is a very regular sort of idle problem. So what I'm gonna do today is actually work on that. There's a couple remedies that have been suggested. Um, boy, that is so much vibration. So a lot of people say, ah, oh, you gotta change your plugs, you gotta change everything else. And really what it comes down to is uh, there tends to be a lot of buildup in the intake tract. So I cleaned out my charger cooler not long ago. I've already changed the plugs to a better set. Um, there's a couple other remedies that are that have been suggested. And one of the best ones is, I believe, actually going to be cleaning the main sensors along the intake tract. So there's three different manifold uh, pressure sensors or three MAP sensors. There is no MAF, mass airflow sensor, in these vehicles. They're all controlled by a speed density uh, control algorithm. So they estimate a volumetric efficiency of the engine and they end up being able to control the fuel and spark based on where the RPM is and that assumed volumetric efficiency, more or less, um, with some feedback from the O2 sensors. So that means that those sensors are key for the engine to run right. Well, there's a lot of oil that gets sucked into the intake tract of these trucks, and that means that the sensors are going to get coated um, pretty regularly. So. Uh, let's go through pulling out the sensors and then talk about how to actually clean. Starting from the front of the engine bay, we have three MAP sensors and a fold absolute pressure. Um, one I have attached with Allen keys on my aftermarket intake. The second one is on this intake tube right here, held in with a couple um, Torx bits. I'll figure out what size those are and that you can barely see right there. So those are the three sensors to pull off and that one's just got one bolt in one side. But that will allow us to clean the sensors and hopefully restore the quality of idle. The other recommendation is to let the system relearn the idle. So we're gonna disconnect the battery cable. Um, so you're gonna loosen the post here, wiggle the battery cable off, set it to the side and that's what you're going to start with. So here we are looking at the three different sensors. Here's the front one um, right after the air cleaner. It's pretty clean. Um, I don't see much in the way of any buildup or residue. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and clean that one anyway. Here's the one from the intake track. You can literally see the just caked on layer of oil so that's a real mess and you can see on this one also just the cake on this is the one from the back of the manifold this one is also just caked over with oil so the idea is we're going to take those um, resistors and we're going to clean those off very thoroughly using an electronic safe cleaner in this case this is contact cleaner. It's also called TV tuner cleaner sometimes. A lot of people might be tempted to use brake clean. Don't do this. No, no. Bad dog. That's a chlorinated brake clean um, that can absolutely trash your electronics. Just don't do it. Trust me, I'm a chemical engineer. Just like this. You want to clean right on that thermistor. And these 
these are this is completely electronic safe so you're not gonna have to worry about that you just want to make sure that the sensors are as clean as possible and this one might be clean I'm gonna go ahead and change the angle see if I can get it from a couple other angles as well Now, all that black that's come off, all of the grease and dirt, different from the underlying brown, all that grease and dirt is the stuff that you don't want on the sensors, because that's what's going to mess with your measurement. So that is a whole lot cleaner. So it doesn't look like there's any physical damage to the sensor at all, it just looks like it was really heavily oil coated. So. This guy, I didn't see much of anything there, um, so I think it's fine, but now I'm going to go plug them all back in, then reconnect the battery and have it relearn the idle process, because as long as the battery maintains connection to the computer, it's going to be constantly adapting and relearning, so you're going to basically cause the computer to relearn the idle speed again. And so this should take away most of the hesitation between the combination of these things. Here are all the sensors plugged back in and reinstalled. One, two, and three. Making sure to keep track of which one's which. Some reconfiguration after initial assembly was required. The idea is um, once I, when I originally had this installed right here, there was a problem with this bend. I didn't have a 90 degree angle, so it pinched off right at the PCV valve, which is here. PCV valve doesn't act like a true check valve in this system, so I've added a check valve in place with a specific direction so that it can only evacuate the crankcase, never charge it. So the idea is it's able to um, pull out all of the blow-by that gets past the rings and pull it into <coughs> the catch can which is still mounted in the same place under the same the same structure so it goes in and out of the catch can and back into the intake here which will mostly be under vacuum but sometimes because this is at manifold pressure behind the throttle body right this will be pressurized some of the time so you don't want flow going back into the crankcase to pressurize the crankcase because then that'll force oil up past the rings um, into the cylinders and it'll burn a lot of oil. So that was one of the issues that I had when this got kinked initially on my install. So this should address that issue. Same thing on the other side except there's no actual PCV valve except now there's a check valve which acts like the PCV valve for the other side of the V. So both sides of the crankcase are vented with a check valve so that they're only going to be evacuated, never pressurized. And that goes forward to the other catch can, which is up here. So, there it is. So the idea is I have a catch can now hooked up for either side in place of the factory lines. And I have check valves to ensure that only vacuum will be applied over here, never pressure down into the crankcase. So it shouldn't burn oil. I should be able to catch all of the nasty oily gook that I just cleaned off of my sensors. And hopefully that will prevent any further burning of oil, but more importantly, um, prevent any significant buildup on the backside of the valves um, for carbon buildup because of the oil um, sort of coking up the backside of the intake valves. So here it is at warm idle again. Um, there's very, very little vibration now. There's still an occasional kind of a stutter hesitation, but nothing that feels anywhere near what it started like. Um, after uh, now I've done my catch cans with the check valves and cleaned up the main sensors along the intake track. 
So really, you don't need to do any kind of fancy taking it in, doing some kind of crazy thing with plug wires or with um, plugs and coils and weird stuff for these EcoBoosts. The first step for you taking care of your um, EcoBoost shutter, I don't know what we're calling it yet, but um, us EcoBoost owner owners are actually going to have to uh, solve some of these problems with solutions ourselves and kind of update the community. So this is part of why I'm doing this video because um, I really haven't seen much on this at all. Um, I've seen a lot of speculation on the web, but um, I've actually done something and made what to me is a very measured difference. Um, so you don't really have to go crazy and do um, crazy things with plugs. Now, in this EcoBoost, I am running one heat range colder plugs, uh, which are the ones that are recommended by a lot of the really high um, reputation tuners. Um, especially one of them is, um, is Tori who does the Unleashed tunes. Um, he recommends using these heat range plugs. Um, so I, I'm running that in a 91 tune. Um, I may still up the idle RPM another, um, I think it's at, I think it's at 650 right now maybe, or, or 600 is what it's targeting. So I may up the idle RPM another um, 50 or 100 in my tuner and see if that makes a little bit more of a difference. But for the most part, this has really solved the main problem with the shutter that I had in the EcoBoost. So hopefully this is helpful to some of the rest of you. Um, and in the meantime, uh, thanks for watching. Um, please feel free to comment and subscribe. If you're a total jerk in the comments, then I'll probably just ignore you because that's probably what you deserve. Um, but if this was helpful, let me know. Thanks.